Okay. So yeah. So basically, I never exactly have an idea of what I want to do when I get when I want to start uh, UI like this. Most times, I get inspired by something. For example, like I said, I got for this particular design, I got my inspiration from we are clue clue architects that come clue archi architects architects dot com. So you can just check out the design yourself, the design of the site yourself, and I that's why I checked to get some inspiration. However, for the actual UI, I think I just went with what's it called? I went with the what my mind i was uh, try was seen on the uh, what's it called on the on the um on the canvas so basically you have the uh, center of attraction sent these major info uh, and major elements in the center so all i just had to do for my own part was just to build um, the ui try to uh, utilize this uh, the empty parts of this um, what's it called of this uh uh canvas so i i tried to utilize the empty parts of this camera which is the air uh, which is around the edges so basically um with this thing centered like this i just build my ui around this um, empty this empty um parts but if maybe i wanted to do something different maybe i could actually shift it to the side and do something around here but um i the way i designed it in mind i already had this one as the center element maybe in the future i might try one or two more explorations but currently I think like this is fine. So let's just try to go um, jump right in into recreating what I had last time. So first of all, of course, the major thing since we already what's the things that make up like a website are uh, images. You have images and then text typography, of course. So after I have already done justice to the image part of things, currently what I just need to do just to like handle the typography, how the type is going to be placed around the website so let me just do something like uh what's it called uh, i think our project what i did last time so let me just call this one our projects as well projects oh let me see, look at this one for inspiration just to be very sure i am getting yeah our work so i'm just going to do something like this for, for the new one as well so i'm going to do something like this for the new one as well so um I get started. Let me use our project for this one. Our project. Okay. I just break it into two because I want it to like be focal here. So um the next thing I'm just going to use like scale up the text to let's see, let's just see let's do sixty four and see. Sixty four looks cool. However, um uh, I am also going to like handle take care of the I don't know what's called that is tracking or leading. I don't know which one of them. I can't really differentiate them all. Either way, it's divert the, the um, horizontal spacing, yeah, data spacing. I'm just going to reduce it because I think I've gotten too used to like reducing a uh, letter spacing from what it is by default, and it just like makes the text look tight up. Okay, because I realized that tighter text, tighter text in, te in terms of in sense of what you call the spacing between the text being smaller, it just kind of looks better sometimes. Although you don't you don't want to do something that uh, that. Um, that uh, truncates the text to look on like this uh -huh. you just want to just make it a uh, what's it called yeah the letters a bit closer together so let me do minus i think it's currently minus 36 so let me just do like minus 10 yeah minus 10 so <coughs> i will reduce the spacing up to this extent that um uh it's still legible and it's still legible and letters are not what it's called trying to like enter it into each other so that's not what you want you just want to reduce the spacing until the text what's it called the text is a uh, is a uh, on the space it just it's just kind of um um really close together uh and also there's really no rule to doing this there's really no i can't give you a particular number that oh what's it called for every text use so and so uh, a number of uh, negative spacing between the between text i don't really have a um, a formula for it i just do what my um i just go with what looks good to me so Compared to the original one, let's see. Compared to the original one, so this is just a uh, typography 101. Compared to the original one, I just feel this one looks. I can't explain it, but for some reason, this one just looks better to me. This one just looks better to me. So that's why I'm going to go with this one. Also, there's still the vertical height I'm going to reduce as well because the default vertical height sometimes it's not really um, that good. So this one, uh, you have a, you you can do you can um, give more space into. The line height uh, with this one compared to the uh, letter spacing. So, uh, it's 
so let me just um, reduce the letter spacing the uh, sorry the line height as well to so let's say something like minus minus 24 percent i don't really know 24 percent minus 24 percent wow that's at, uh, that's too much for some reason 24 i guess nope okay minus let's do minus minus eight there minus eight wow it's acting weird it's acting really really weird because normally i think it would just give me let me let me check the other one mm. check the other one so and see what I did there. So, Ubot Sans is what I want to use. There. So, I'm going to use Ubot there as well. Medium and 6%. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm the one that's making a mistake. I'm using negative. Negative. When it should not be negative. So, let me switch the text from uh, what's it called? Inter to Ubot. H-U-B-O-T. You can also look for this. I think it's a free font. It's a free font uh, on uh, what's it called? On uh, a GitHub that was released by GitHub, the of design team or the design team or something gm who bought sans and one other mona sans m-o-n-e so you can just take both of them out for and see how it looks for a project so i think this one really looks good it looks good it almost reminds me of one other text and one other um what's it called type family i'm familiar with but in either ways let me go with this um who bought sans and 64 and then i think this spacing looks good let me do 20 let me do 40 like I said, there's really no formula to these things. Just um, um, press numbers until one comes up that really looks good. However, I still try to uh, keep it within, um, try to space things with the um, logic of, uh, what's it called? Four pixel, the four pixel grid. So I add a more than four, four, four more, um, uh, progressionally. And I, whatever number I arrive at, I just use that as my, what's it called? As my number for, as my spacing for things. I think I'm currently using minus 10, but let me see minus 12. So minus 12 percent for this one for the line spacing just to still maintain my whole theory or minus eight because i think minus 12 is too much so minus eight looks good for the line spacing and therefore the sorry for the line height minus 56 okay cool so i think our project looks cool like this i'm just going to like use a, a bolder one extra bold it's too bold semi bold mm, there's really no rules to this thing just find something until just tweak it until something looks good so for the um color i'm just going to use 12 12 12 12 12 12 so just type 12 once you type 12 first type the first two numbers uh it just I think I just does the rest and fills it so the, it's not really different from black uh, but i don't want to use total black for it that's just one one rule of my design most, most times I, I don't use total black except when i intentionally want to use um, um total black so i've done that i've done that particular one i'm just going to like create another body of text that I'm going to place here as well. So let me just um, uh, run this plugin, Lorem Ipsum. Lorem Ipsum. I think Lorem Ipsum. All the other, the other better plugins that you can actually find that do a good job of creating realistic copy for you. But this one, I just want to populate it with text. I don't really have, I don't really want to dwell, sweat the details of seeing I want to try to do something, try to do something interesting. Or use a um, actual copy. I think I am. I am seeing this text, and it's kind of look. This a uh, typography. This a uh, what do you call it? Forty forty. Drop it down. Forty forty. Wow, that's a long text. I am seeing this layout, and it's looking kind of interesting to me. But maybe I'll try it out after the design session. But yeah, currently let's just stick with uh, something simple. Should we? Should we play it safe and let me see? Okay. Okay. Nope. It won't work. Because this is a GIF. Let's not let's just play it safe and um, and use the simple one. So 16, I'm just gonna shrink shrink down 16. Uh change the normal the body text to inter instead of robot sans. Uh medium, sorry, regular. And then these line height to something like 140 percent so 140 percent works fine and then i'm just going to truncate it down reduce the quantity of the information there i'll just place somewhere so i'm going to use it utterly out to handle some things but currently i'm just creating the um, um content i'm going to use 
for this design. Also, something I, I like doing some in some um, special cases is that I don't like I don't really don't like how this text is. Okay, let me explain. I don't like how it's spanning it, like the way it spans and then some of them like there's some just some it's not uniform. Like it's not uniform. So I just want to like justify the text. Although sometimes I go in and actually like type perf type text to make it perfect and everything. Uh -huh. Like try to make the make it feel like one full like all of them to have equal why is this happening? So to have equal uh, length, but that's that's really stressful. And again, on some screens, if it were a different screen, it may not actually span the same way visually. So what I do sometimes is that I just go and do justify, just to make them have the same, um, the same uh, what's it called margin, the same uh, ma um, margin end from end to end. So it just looks cleaner to me and it looks more organized. So that's what I do in some cases. But in some cases, my uh, justif um, justifying a text may actually mess, mess things up. So that's not what we don't see. And, and sometimes justified texts are harder to read, especially when they are like not really, when the uh, content is not too much, when it's not a lot, a lot of content, it's harder to read. For example, if they say, if I were to do like this, let me see. I can't really give a sample now, a situation now, but then sometimes just five texts are really hard to read because of the way uh, the uh, multiple computer spaces the uh, things uh, from each other. It just makes it harder to read. So sometimes you don't want to go with it. But since we're just like focusing on visuals for this, design, let's just um, ignore that and just go ahead with what we want, what we have in mind. Uh, so <laughs> that's now that's done. I'm just going to like create a what's it called, a sample logo. So I ideally have a logo I normally use for my. I have a what's it called logo. If you've checked a couple of my designs, you always see this particular logo, logo because I don't really have the time to be creating a <coughs> to be creating logos and everything and the nav bars for every design project. So most of them they just re reuse. Since the actual point is to like uh, focus on the UI interactions, I just co copy the same nav bar and use it's a cool nav bar. So I'm just going to copy it and use it here. As I'm not just, I'm not going to go through the pain of doing um, another one again. Should I? Should I? Should I? Should I? Should I? Should I? Is it worth it? Yeah, let's just let's just leave it. Let's just leave it. However, I want to. There's something I fun for him funky I do with this uh, with this stuff here. So I'm just going to like still show how I create them. Uh, let me just ungroup them. Thank you. Ungroup. So I. These are the elements for the what's it called for the nav bar. So you have the studio page. Let me um, hide this one. The studio page, our story page, and values page, and contact page. So ideally, I want to have these as my uh, nav links. But something I want to, something I like doing because of uh, the way I'm going to like be um, what do you call it animating them. Something I like doing is just to like not in all cases, but in this particular case, I'm going to group these two together first, then group this one in next uh, together next, and then group it with this one as well so you have this as a separate group from everything just has like what's it called it's just a group side of a group side of a group because of the way i want to animate them which is why I, is why i do it like this so i'm just going to like first of all reduce spacing here to something like 24 i guess 24 this one 24 as well if you're familiar with auto layout this is not uh, this should not be difficult for you but if you're not i think you might need to what you go so improve your auto layout skills but if you can't do it with auto layout that's totally fine you can do it manually you can actually move this thing but auto layout just helps you save you a ton of time with um moving things around and stuff like that so with that done i can go ahead to um, properly structuring this one as well so i can animate and um, proceed into anima animating so one thing i want to do is to also uh auto layout this ones as well to layout this ones as well then still auto layout them again a second time just this one I want to use it for the ex external padding. I mean, external, yeah, padding. So I'm just going to like make the padding. It's currently 10. I'm going to make it, um, uh, let's say 60, I guess. 60. Make the top one 60 as well. Top and bottom 60 as well. Then align left, align bottom. And then I'm going to sh make it the, uh, what's it called? Set it to fixed height. Fixed width, rather. Set the um, width to fixed width. So make it 1440. Since that's the width of the of the frame we're currently using, so make 14, 14 and then you're going to set this one. Set the inner auto layout group. Let's call it a let's call it a multi called uh, text. Let's call it text. I'm going to set it to uh, what's it called 
to fill so you can actually fill the container and it can be responsive as well so i'm going to say to fill and also set, set the spacing to auto so you can type auto there you can type auto there to just set to auto you can there's multiple ways you can actually go about it you can also click on this center and then press x to to uh, multi code set the space into auto and then it means that uh, the element size should just be spaced um, automatically so ideally that has been done and i'm just going to i'm going to uh what do you call it now set this one to let's say fill container fill container set this one to fill container i think it's going to work i think it's going to work you know what let's not let's not dwell on the let's not use the waste to do on auto layout let's just give it a fixed size so the fixed size i'm going to give it, let me just see 500 500 this is the fixed size i'm going to give it and so the text is going to be five the, the entire text is going to span 500 uh, 500 in width it's going to be 500 in width so this one is okay like this and with this setup now i can now move to animating it animating the ui so i'm going to animate how it's supposed to like come out if because currently how it works is that once from this screen from this screen here which we're going to call let me just call the website this one website as well so from this screen the idea is to from from this empty screen just um have it um what does it do first type uh, on click okay so here okay yeah so from here once it's clicked it moves from this screen to the screen so the way it works currently since this day uh, we've i've not really done any i've not really tampered with the with the uh, what's it called positions of this text it just it only like what's it called it's only uh just a uh, fit it fits into black and fits into like fits into black or fits into white right now it fits, it fits into black whichever one it just fits in here because it appears and disappears because on the second screen it's not there so on this screen i say so it just fits into view on this screen so what i want to do now is th while this is okay for some websites what i want to do really is to actually come out like as if it comes out from an invisible uh what's it called an invisible wall under this place so i'm going to do that in a moment however i think i still want to tamper with the ui itself a bit because i want it to look um, i think it could look better so i'm going to this text i'm going to make it 14 it's too big 16 is too big to make 14 okay yeah so depending on what you want to re the kind of text you want to put here you might want to like re re what's it called you might want to uh, really increase it in increase its size or uh, you might want to increase the size or not even make it as much as this but this particular one i since it's just i'm just focusing on 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 design in this case i don't i don't really care about the content that's there i just want to i tweak the content to um to suit my my design needs so i'm going to make the height i'm just going to make the height almost the same as this one or like similar so with me reducing the uh, what's it called with the the size to 14 i think it currently works the way it is so i'm just going to quickly jump into this particular text animating but um setting this particular text up for animation so i'm going to drag it out first so th this is what i like to do this is what, what i like to do. I, try, I drag it out first and then i make the changes outside and then i play and place it inside of the frame after i'm done so outside like this i am going to first of all frame it frame selection so from on my frame selection i set the uh what's it called clip contents do i need to do it here i need to do it here no not yet so i what i do since this text is two lines this text is two lines i want both lines to come out separately i am going to break the text into up and down the text into up and down so what i like to do is i like to duplicate duplicate it uh to uh, to the number of uh, what to the number of uh, according to the number of lines that i have for the text you're going to see the importance when i get to this section that has a lot of text for this one let's just do two so i'm going to duplicate it should i duplicate it twice first no not twice first once is fine first and i will now frame this one again i will now frame this duplicated text so inside of this frame that i'm going to call uh, let me call it main text let me call this general text um frame main main text i'm going to call this one i'm going to frame this one again this text that's inside i'm going to call it um uh what's it called up text okay cool up text so i'm going to call up text and then i'm going to um turn on the clip content for it that's for the up text turn on the clip content for it and then i'm going to then shrink the height 
I think I, I hold most times I hold command or control. So like it doesn't mess up the what's it called? Uh, the uh, what's it called? The spacing. Is it spacing? It doesn't mess up the um the uh, positioning of the of the text inside of it. So hold command and then drag the button to meet to meet the bottom of the text. Sometimes it doesn't mean text exa exactly, but then to meet to the closest um, what's it called to the closest you can get to the text without without clipping some part of it off. So what I'm doing currently is that I'm clipping I'm clipping I'm reducing the layer height sorry the uh, frame height to show just the up part of the text. So if I were to turn off this text at the background, the background rather, the background, you're going to see what I just did. So I cropped it, I just cropped this this uh, project part, I cropped it out. So that's what I just did for this particular one. So I have, I always leave a text, a what's it called, I leave a text in the background so I can use it as reference in case I, in case I need to like move things around. So I'm going to um, duplicate this one again and then move it to the bottom. Sorry, move it. Move, I'm going to duplicate that up text. Oh no, let me not duplicate it up. I'm going to duplicate that this background text again. This one has in the background that I'm using as reference. I'm going to duplicate it again and then frame it again. I'm going to frame it. So default uh, multiple the uh, shortcut to frame is Control uh, of Control alternate G or con Command Option G. So I'm going to do that and then call this one. Rename it to and call it down text. So I'll call it down text and then I'm just going to crop it from the top instead to where the project to where to, to the closest part I can get to the project without cropping the project. So now I've done that, I'm going to turn on clip content as well. So basically I have the up and down text separated like this and I cannot turn off the background text. So what I have here, you can see what I have here now is I have the up text separate, I have the down text separate. However, inside of this up and down text are separate, the full text is actually still inside. But because I don't want to go through the part of um, the pain of uh, having to uh, clean it and it's going to be stressful. And I just found a better and easier way to do it, just to crop it, crop the text. So you can see this part is being cropped off. I'm just going to stretch it to make sure that it doesn't crop the text in any way at all. Yep. So now that is done, now that is done, I am now going to, what do you call it? I'm now going to still frame this up text again. This up text, I'm going to frame it again and call it, let's call it, let's call it up. Frame it again, the up text separately and call it, uh, rename it to up. And then what's it called? Rename, frame the down text again. That's command option G. Or control alternate G and rename it, call it uh, down. So inside of the down text, inside of the uh, uh, layer that down text is reaching, that down text is the uh, so down text is nested inside of another frame that's called down. And then the actual text is inside of the down text uh, frame. So what I'm going to do lastly is going just going to turn on the uh, clip content for the down for the down uh, what's it called layer and turn on the what's it called. Uh, clip content for the up for the up as well so have main text for in the layers in the layer section i have main text i have up i have down inside of the down i have down text and then inside of the down text i have the actual uh, project text inside of the up i have the up text there and then i have the uh, project that's also what's it called that's also inside of it as well so with that done i have this one set up so i'm going to turn on clip content okay it's clip content is already turned on already turned on so i'm just going to copy this main text copy it so should i copy it first um copy copy first yeah let's just copy first let me just copy let me copy it first so i'm just going to copy it and then use it to paste to replace so paste to replace so paste to replace it so i've pasted i've used um the um what's it called this text i just edited here i've used to replace that one the old one that was here before so this one is no longer a text but like a nested layer layer one a nested uh, what's it called a nested a nest yeah a nested nested couple of frame from a couple of texts or something like that but let, let me just call it that nested tech nested text yeah so now that's done i can move on to this one as well and you're going to see how it's going to all play out in a moment so i'm going to do the same apply the same logic here but because this one is more has more this thing more it's going to more text it's going to take a bit more time however we can get it done so let me just call this one. I'm going to first of all, for those who do not understand, hide it first one. I'm going to 
uh, frame this text. I'm going to frame selection. And then I'm going to name this one as a what's it called body text. Okay. And then I'm going to go inside and then duplicate it. So one thing I like to do for a text as many like this, I need to be able to see which one is which. So I'm going to duplicate it and then make the duplicates. I'm going to just uh, make change the color to red. So you can just type red in the box and change to red. So change it to red. So you can see that we have two texts now. We have the red text. We have the black one. The black one is the background. Uh, it's one in the background. I'm going to be using as a reference for this uh, what's it called for these red ones. So the red ones. Um, I am going to frame it now. I'm going to frame it. So I'm going to frame it. Um, so command, command option G. I'm going to call it. Um, uh, let's just call it one. So that one is for one line one. It's just for line one. So after I've uh, framed it, I'm going to drag it up to this place. Drag it up to to the uh, to touch the last like the text that's that's um, stretching down the most. So I'm just going to drag. I think it's, it's the P. So uh, yeah. So now that's done, I'm going to turn on clip content for the layer. So you can see that it has streamed all the other stuff out of it. So now that's done, I can go ahead to now still frame this line one again and call it line. So I'm going to frame it again, frame selection again and call it, um, and rename it to, let's say, line one. I don't really have a naming system, but that's fine. So line one. So line one has one inside of it and that one has the full text inside of it so what i'm going to do next is to duplicate line one move it down a bit and then move it down like just to look like the other text and then i'm going to click into it and then move like this uh, move the text so like i said i still have the, that full text that full text i didn't i didn't edit any part of it like i didn't, I didn't crop it i didn't uh, clean all the lines and here it's just a way to ease, yeah, ease up your work i didn't clean all the lines so i have all the text inside of it so i just need to just go down and then um, go inside of text and move it up to the line that is here so with this done with this done i am just going to do the same thing for the other text as well just going to do the same for the other lines as well so duplicate it move it down However, to ease my work, to ease my work, to make my work easier, I'm just going to measure the distance from this one to this one. Two, okay, cool. Um, auto layout them. Mark both both lines. Auto layout them. Just call it a, what's it called? I'm going to rename to lines. Lines. So you have inside of lines, you have line one, line two. So I'm just going to duplicate it downwards, and then click inside, and then move the text upwards. Most times I hold shift when doing it just to make it move faster. So I move the text upwards to that particular line. And then I can click outside to the line three, and then duplicate line three to line four. So click inside, move the text upwards. Just to so you can see how, how I'm using the black text as my marker. I'm using it as my marker to align the red text to be on the same to be on the same line as it. So it doesn't look like I went inside and actually edited anything. So you're going, you're going to click into it, move it down again, then click into it, move it down as well so cool you can see that we currently have all the red text on the same lines as all the white as all the black text so the black text um, has done its work for us i can now go inside and delete the black text I've the black text so this one i call lines the next thing i'm going to do is to just uh, what's it called so you can go to selection color and just change it to black since it's black we're using so i think one to one two is the color code so just one to one two once I type 12, Figma will do the rest and add the many ones you want to. So, like that, I've actually done the um, what you call it. I'm done with the, I'm done setting up this body text for animation. So, I'm just going to copy it and paste to replace. So, you won't notice that I did anything. Like, you won't notice that I didn't until I need to animate. Because for a normal text, you can't really do those animation, uh, what you call techniques, this particular animation technique. So, what I'm going to do next is just to duplicate this one. Uh, and. Um, and make my edits here since it's going to be going from this screen to this screen i'm going to make my edits to this text here so what we're going to do now is just to start with this text so since we've already set the main text up click on the up select the up select click into the up click select the actual text itself and then move it down if you turn down your clip contents you'll see that it's, it just moves down uh what's it called seamlessly and then it's hidden by the clip content that you're that by the frame that's a uh, cutting of the content so i'm just going to move it down 
Um, so ideally, I move it down to touch the exact bottom of the frame of its frame, and then for the next for the bottom text, I do the same as well. No, I don't do the same to the actual text. Yeah, I think I just totally forgot. So what I just move, what I actually move is the a layer that's con that's clipping the what's called that's clipping text. So I'm just going to move the one that's written up text here. I'm going to move it. So I'm going to move it to touch the bottom of its frame. So click on it, move the frame that's containing the text, that's containing the truncated text, move it down. So ideally I move it down here. So depending on the animation, so you can see it's touching the bottom of the frame for the second line. But for what I do, since I want them to come out like different, I want this slight, I want this slight interaction to, to happen. I will move it down by, I move it down like 10 steps more than I moved the first one down. I don't know if it makes any sense, but uh, well basically what I'm just trying to do is make it like go down more than that. It should, it should be it should go down more than the first one. So that's what I just basically do for the second text, uh, for the second text, and just like that, like that. So I'm going to move to the. I've done that for this particular text. It's going to look like nothing is going, no, nothing is here currently. But once we animate it, it moves. It will come. It will come out from here to this uh, multiple to its current position here so i'm going to do the same for this text as well so basically what i'm going to do for this one is to select all of them to i think an easier way to do is just to click on the frame that's containing all of them press enter to select all the what's it called the lines or the frames so i'm going to click enter again and it's going to select all the what's it called actual frames down to the frames that I actually want to move so i'm just going to move them down okay i didn't turn on I didn't turn on the uh, clip content for the frames. Yeah, so clip content is turned on. And you can now move all the actual, all the all the frames that house each line of the text. You're going to, you can move them down. So you can see how it disappears. You can see how it disappears. So I'm going to move them down like this. So the first one, the first one, I'm going to make it touch the bottom of its frame. Yeah. So the first one. So I, what I do to, so instead of uh, what's it called having to do that um, work of moving them one by one by one, I just move all of them at once, and then I can move, I can deselect the first one from the last one. I can deselect the first one by holding down control or command, hold control, hold down control, and then move the other ones, um, ten feet, um, what's it called, ten, uh, ten uh, steps downwards. So when I make ten, ten steps, what I, I'm basically doing is just holding shift and pressing the what's it called, pressing the uh, direction key, which is down so i've moved it 10 you can see that it's it's 10 steps away from the or 10 pixels away from the from its uh, uh, containing frame so i can select that other uh, multiple i can select that uh, second frame S sorry deselect the second line by clicking on by holding command and clicking on its on the on its layer and then i can move the other ones down again um by i think it's going to move here by 20 so you can see it by 20 so select the next this next one again and move it down that's by 10 again by 10 by 10 so what i'm doing this is just not to make them come out come out at the same time you can actually make them come out at the same time that's the effect you want to achieve but for me i think it looks nicer when it comes out like at different speeds in here so that's it's just more it lo looks more more alive that's why i do do it the way i do it so uh, let me just um, put type wire bots uh, together here so you can see what we have been able to achieve. So, um, set it. I've moved. I just connected the wire to this frame and on click smart animate 400. Okay, let's see the effect that it brings. So, let me just click on this one. Okay, so I'm moving back to first frame. Okay, let me just move it here so we can play between. So, most of what I do, I just, I just do like a rust interaction first and then I do on click on click just to make sure that I can click back and forth and see how it plays out if it's smooth enough and continue so okay so you can i don't know if you can see it i don't know if you can see it so i think an issue i'm currently having is that these ones seem to fade into they see they don't like disappear smoothly they don't like disappear into their frame smoothly i think i know why why is because the what's it called the uh, <coughs> uh clip content is not turned on for this for these ones so i'm just going to go here and turn on so just select the lines the layer the um, multi-code auto layout layer that's called lines select it and then click enter and then turn on the clip content for all the for all the frames 
for all the lines, for all the frames that are called line one, line two, line three, and one, line whatever. So once they're turned on, you can let's see the effect. So you can see how it it comes out more smooth. I don't know if you can see the effect, but it comes out here more smoother than it was coming out before. So that's just basically how we're supposed to do for this uh, particular how you you can achieve this particular effect. So another thing I want to do is to I don't want the um, now. So this now by now is where I want to like still do like some minor micro animations for so on this screen uh the first thing i want to do is to go here go to this um this um the frames that contain this one make it like a uh, what's it called it's currently 24 I'm going to make it like a uh, add there let's just add a um, what's it called let's just add um eight to it let's add 16 okay, 16. so this next frame so what, what's the what's the value that I give? So forty, okay, forty. So I'm this next one. I'm going to make it forty plus sixteen, just to make it more than this one. So fifty six. So this one, I'm going to make it fifty six um, plus sixteen as well. So cool. So you can see that this one is farther from this uh, from th this text. This to our studio is farther from is farther from. Uh, it's farther. It, the distance from here to this um from this text to this place is more than the one from here to here because it just like gives it like a more uh what's it called a gradual uh, what's it called gradual uh, uh effect that's that's why i like it so basically i once i've done that i'm just going to like lower the opacity of this particular text and uh, lower the opacity of this particular text okay so i'm just going to lower the opacity of this uh oh, sorry of the nav bar of the entire nav bar itself and then i'm going to like click between both screens to see how it transitions so if you can i don't you i know your eyes cannot probably keep track of every single thing but if you can keep track of this particular one you can see the way it's it uh, what's it called animates and gets closer to you together and expands and, and all of that and these ones they just come out from their respective uh, frames that are currently hiding them so i'm going to make a uh, what's it called make it uh, automate the process in a moment but First of all, what I like doing is I like, I like trying out the what's it called interaction to see how it works and if I need to increase the speed or reduce the speed or do something with the speed. So I think I need to probably increase the speed a bit. Sorry, sorry, uh, add to the speed rather. It's too fast. So let me make it 600. It's 2400. So make make 600. Mm. So I think I think think yeah, I think 600. We can we can do 600 for now. So this is a bit distracting so i'm just going to turn it down uh -huh, turn it down okay yeah so i think it works i think it works i think it works so let's just do let's just try to automate the whole um, what's it called the whole process how it's going to move from here to here to here so one thing i want to do first is to uh is to replace this gif replace it here paste it here instead rather so i don't want i don't want i don't want it to i want it to actually grow from this place to this place so uh gif make sure that the same name because once you are copying something and pasting something that has number numbers and pasting it somewhere else the name the number numbering can change so once it does that your interaction may not play the way you want it to work because here now it was gif 2 here is gif 1 so if there's a discrepancy in the name it may not uh, what's it called the interaction may not play well so just going to change the name to GIF GIF. So here it's GIF, here it's GIF. Cool. So let's play it and see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it works. I don't know if I can tap out the speed animation speed here in Figma. I don't know if I can tap out the speed, but no problem. That's fine. <coughs> I think the issue was really w w with our animation. We like, yeah. I think when I was trying to export, it was it, it, like it, uh, I could not convert because of I didn't want quality. I didn't want the quality the size to be too much, so I didn't want to. I tried to use like a low FPS, which is why it's looking like it's really really fast. But personally, I would have liked it to be like it's a bit slower. So you know what I would do? I would just use my other. I'm going to use my other. Uh, what's it called? This other design here instead. Just so it looks good for tutorial. Sick. Oh, oh. Okay, the color is different. The color is different. Okay. What I'm just going to just just change the color of the background to this one, okay? So that's that. Mm, change this color as well to select the color of this background. So like that, we have this done. I'm just going to copy this one here, 
opacity as well it's all work okay so i'm then going to i'm now going to shrink it and shrink it by holding option oh wow, it's not shrinking so i need to go inside and make it uh scale scale so i'm going to shrink it and then i'm going to like rotate it a bit mm -hmm. and then turn that opacity so yeah that's initial state that this is the thing so just give the moment to load up to load up okay i think this position looks cool looks cool looks cool so just give the moment to, for the gif to load up so once that is done with, with uh, what's it called animated we've set up the animation for our uh, now bar for this uh, text here and for this text here uh most time what i like doing i like like adding like a fancy loading animation as well so what i do to do loading animation like there's multiple ways you can do like loading animation depending on what you want to what you want to achieve so for this for this one i'm just going to basically going to do like a uh, what's it called a, a um a linear loading animation like a line that's trying to feel like what's it called a line that's trying to feel like a box or something like that so let's see what we can do with the time that we have left so first of all i'm going to create like a frame frame see i'm calling i'm saying i'm using frames not i'm, I'm, not, I'm not using rectangles so you can use rectangles but you will have to go the route of making layers uh, sorry i say layers uh, making masks and masks are actually uh, you can actually achieve that mask with uh, simply with uh, using what you call layers instead of using frames instead so the first thing i'm going to do for this uh, this thing this frame is to give it a feel uh, let's do a feel that doesn't look that looks that blends with the background so that blends, blends with the background and then we'll use another one to put another inside so that blends with the background but it's not like the background exactly like the background so centralize it so if you can't see what i'm doing let me just make it um zero so centralize it and then i'm going to shrink it down shrink the height down to something like uh, let's say eight i guess let's do it although it 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 does, does it work for me does it work for me i think it looks too chunky let me play it and see it looks too chunky in height so let me just do the height down to like six or so no six still too much let's just do four four is my preferred number centralize it centralize it play it okay cool i think it looks cool for the sake of this design session let's do six so everyone can see it okay i think it looks better mm -hmm. so yeah for the for the width i don't really have a preferred number let's just 300 i guess 300 so it depends on it depends on you really it's fine it's just up to, it's up to eyeballing but if you want to do full full width loading that's entirely up to you so uh, i'm going to grab a text grab a text from one of these ones move it here and just write there loading So another thing I forgot to do, another thing I forgot to do was to make all this text because of the because of the aesthetics of this design. And I want to like make all every, every all everything like capital letters. It's something I, re I realized that creative websites, uh, creative web websites actually do a lot. They tend to use like capital letters, either capital letters or like all small caps. But that's like that's really entirely up to you. It's entirely up to you because I'm using caps here for the um, for the nav links. So I would have loved to use the uh, what's it called caps or caps here for the text as well. However, it's a requirement to change like every single text to caps, and it may not really look good in the end. So let's not even go through that pain. Or should we? I think there's a fast way to do it. So select everything. Okay. Uh, caps. Yep. However, the text will span more than it normally currently spans. So no, let's maintain it for now. It's only interaction with Costa. So that's basically how to that's basically that so grab a loading text a text for the loading shake it down so move it to the middle if we have time we can actually still do we can do more fancy loading but for now let's just try to keep it as simple as possible make it eight. like i said i like spacing things when like with multiples of four so it's currently eight so if four doesn't work use a multi card for to it to make it eight if it um, doesn't work twelve 16 like that like that 20 24 and the rest like that so that's actually the a rule of spacing it's actually a rule of spacing if you can go and check it read about the four pixel grid so if you space uh, like it's just a, a rule that basically says space things 
or size things in multiples of four. And there's a multiple of eight rule, yeah, but that multiple of eight, I, I realize that it doesn't really have flexibility because sometimes eight doesn't really look good. So four is just, it's just more natural. Four just feels better. It gives you more control to your UI elements. So I'm going to drop the uh, multiple, the, use a color that blends in slightly the background. And then I'm going to call this, uh, what's it called? Frame load, loader. I'm just call it loader, okay? And then I'm going to create a rectangle. Now I can create a rectangle now. Create a rectangle, paste it inside of the loader. So make sure that your, cl your clip content is turned on for the loader. So put the rectangle inside of the what's it called? Inside of the loader. And uh, maybe what I'm going to do now is just um, make it fully rounded. So for the uh, what's it called? For the corner radius, just 999 to whatever amount you put. Just make sure it's fully rounded. For this one as well, 9999. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's that's this that's that for this one. That's how you create the basic one. So I'm going to make create the full the field state first. Field states, I'm going to change the color to uh, something that looks more visible, I guess. Let me see. So me, I like designing grayscale a lot. I like designing grayscale. And again, I feel like if it's the what's it called, if it's, if it's the brand. If it's the brand, just simple and and uh, concise. So can I do f white? White does it look good? Mm. Um, I think let's let's do, let's do let's do in between brown, something like brown or ash rather. That's the f that's the full state, and um, I think it looks too long. Sure. So I'm just going to drop the width down to let's say 200 yeah 200 looks cool so shrink this one now as well the rectangle that's inside of it so once that's done copy it copy paste to replace here okay so we can now in this state we can do that it's it's back use your you can use your keyboard to move just to avoid mistakenly removal from the frame so you can use your keyboard to move it all the way uh, so all the way here to to a state where it's like just outside and then uh creates like a central center state as well a center state so a center state or a state where it's it's just like somewhere not comp not in the middle maybe in the middle uh, but maybe somewhere anywhere really anywhere that just like just a bit what's it called that's come out a bit so yeah this is what i do so you have three states same states now um I have three states now. I think I need a final state as well where the thing disappears. These are just like small, minor, minor, fancy, fancy, uh, what's it called? Details I like sweating when I'm trying to do uh, animations like this. So I'm going to frame, I'm going to frame uh, this text. I'm going to frame this text in here. Call it, um, just, just call it text or anything really. Let's call it, then clip content clip the content on script content and then i want to copy it and then paste to replace the other loading text so yeah now that's done with that done so in this state in this final state what i want to do is that i want the text to move down like just like go down and then for the loading 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 what do i want to do with this one do i want it to Maybe I mean just make it to just um yeah I need to I, I think I need to frame it as well. It's frame it as well. So call it um just call it loading frame. Okay. So clip content. Clip content is, is a great way to avoid using masks. You can use masks, but then so if you want to avoid using masks, just use them um, clip content as well. So I'm just going to move the loader to the bottom. Is that, is that really what I want to do? Yeah, let's just move. Let's just keep it simple for now. Let's just keep it simple. Let me not try to go overboard trying to be fancy. So, loading frame, copy the frame name. Since I can't, I don't want to be copying and pasting the frame everywhere else. So, just copy the frame name. Um, frame this one, rename it, paste the frame name. So that, it, like I said, it's important that everything has the same name. If not, uh, what's it called? Uh, Figma will not recognize the name of things. So, Paste the frame name everywhere. Mm, okay, rename. 
taste for you. So yeah, I think I have these states. Um, uh, empty states, uh, half states, full states, and then disappearing state. And then I now have this state where uh, where this thing comes into view. So cool, I think we can start with this. So just um, wire this one here goes here so here see this one so after you set the what's it called this piece to the trigger to after delay after delay we can just do anything let's say 400 for this first one so depending on how long you want to wait for this first one moves to the second one that's really up to you so animation set to smart animates uh smart animates do i want to make it i think i want to make it um yeah smart animates so ease out so this one's in this ones you can actually choose anything really but depending on what the effect you want to achieve i think let's just do it ease out first and then um we do uh go to this next one change the from one click to after delay so after delay i think anything really so depend let's just I, most times at, in the beginning i just do anything until i go and play it and then i see how it works and then i'm like okay no this is this is what I, what I need to go and tamper with again so from here now it moves move to this final screen um on click that delay, that delay, let's do 100. Like I said, I can just do any values now. It's when I go in and I see how it works. I can say, okay, you know what? I need to go back and actually change them. Um, a few, a couple of them. Um, things. Why is the flow starting here? Please do not start here. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, um, so how does transition here? So it transitions here after delay. Okay, so the transition is just here. We don't need any fancy animation, it can just be instant or dissolve. So, instant works, I think instant works. Mm, let's just do 100 as well. So, 100. So, here, here, change to after delay as well. I think I was already on, I already put it on, on click, so I'm going to change it after delay as well. So, make it um, let's let's do 100 ish, I guess. So, 100. Cool, 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 cool. So I am think I'm cool with these, uh, what's it called, with these, um, with these results, for the, these initial results. So I'm going to just set start, um, on click. So on click, on click, I want to jump back to uh, first state and start all, all over again. No, I don't want to like that too. I actually want it to, to, to animate backwards and then jump back to this thing. So this one is going to be after, after delay as well. No, on click. Let's leave on, on click. So this one is now from here like this is now it jumps back to to um, to the loading state. So on click. So in this state, in this where I'm like using this state, this state is where you have this uh, uh, rotated version of this thing, and then the what's it called, the text that the bottom and everything. So. This one is where the uh, loading loading uh, stuff like uh, disappears into its frame. So just to be just to get that out of the way, so we can just we can play now from the beginning and see what we have. I think there'll be a lot of mistakes. Oh my god, what is this? So there's you can see that now this way it starts like spotting small small problems and you start knowing what to address. So I think there's an issue here. Uh, this one is jumping to another frame. It's jumping to another frame. Why it's jumping, I can't tell right now, but I will be able to. So let me close it. Sometimes the program might, might actually be crazy going like what support 200. Okay, loading frame play. Let's play and see the result. So you just give one moment. Just give you one moment. So here, uh, so you see that what I'm trying to do, that kind of loading. Oh boy. There's a slight problem here. I think this problem problem is from this particular screen. This particular screen. So loading frame. Loader. Something is something is wrong, so I can't tell. 
right now. Okay. I'm just going to move the screen away and check if I still have any other screens here. So I think I need what I need to do is to Okay, yes. This is the problem. There was a screen, there was there was this one hiding behind uh hiding behind it all the time. I knew there was something up. So delete it. I'm going to delete it. If I delete it even, there's a connected, there's already a prototype that's connected to it already. So I'm just going to connect to this one instead. This is the actual screen that should be moving somewhere. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're cool now. We're cool. So I'm just going to move it. Okay, and now I can now play again. And so it should work fine now. So you can see, you can see how it works. You can see how it works. Um, here it should jump. I did it should jump back to after delay. It should jump back to this place. So in instance, we don't really need a fancy animation of this particular screen. Okay. So play again from the beginning. Okay, I think I, I spot a problem. A problem I, I can spot is that, um, what's it called? Uh, on these other, on the loading frames of these other screens, uh, clip content is not turned on. Clip content is not turned on. I can see it because I, I mean, I'm the one that designed it, so I can see. So you can see clip content is not turned on from them. So the way it disappears is not as smooth as you want it to be. So just going to click all of them and turn on clip contents for all the, all the, loading frames so now i can play so you can see the way it leaves it look like it leaves in a more natural manner so this is basically everything i uh, we've been able to what's it called been able to like see how we can achieve this uh, what's it called fancy text review it's always really, really cool on uh, what's it called on page load it's always like it's always really like uh, the experience is always like really smooth and it's on, on page on, on the way when it's good to use like when a page just loads up so like it's something i used to like give a what's it called like this kind of uh, a smoothness to my sites to my site designs like i don't just use it on one project i use it like on, on on tons of projects in fact even this current project i'm actually working on i think it's currently implemented let me quickly demo it so you can see all these texts now on the screen once i play here this i play here and then i click although i've not really like finished prototyping it but once i play here you can see how all the text actually show up like it just reveals and it's just like i just feel like it's a really really nice and what's it called nice way to handle text review like even motion designers do it a lot like it's one of the basics of motion um, what's it called motion design it's a basic um um, um a design tool implemented in motion design so you can just go around and see and play play around with um, this the text reveal thing there are tons of other things other creative ways you can do it there's also you could also say okay you know what i don't want it to come from the bottom i want the layer to open as well so let me show what i mean quickly let me see what time okay time is almost our uh, time is up really so but let me show what i mean so currently the way this one reveals it comes from the it comes from the bottom like comes up on the bottom so i'm going to do another method now which is that on the what's it called on the uh on the on each layer uh, what do you call them against of um the layers and i'm using to as a what's it called it as a mask i'm just going to like shrink hold option and command to shrink so you can see shrink like this so i'm going to shrink it to like two Okay, one is fine. One, shrink it to, to the height it's one. And then you can still see the text too. So what I'm going to do for the text is just maybe to... Oh, what can I do for the text? I didn't plan it very well, but... <laughs> you know what, that's fine. I, well, that's fine. You can just show for now. Maybe in a, when I need to like do a more refined tutorial, you can do that. So just shrink it till you can't shrink it no more. If I were to... If I, sh if I shrunk it... Like, there's no way you can shrink it so it can be like... It can be like... Uh, what's it called? It can be zero. So it, it, it has to be a height. So I think you can do... 0 0.1 actually i think as you say so just make it like the smallest size it can possibly be 0 0.1 okay so now let's see how it reveals okay let me just type 
from delay to uh, click. So you can see the effect. So you can see. And then if you can look at it, well, let me turn off every other thing. So you can, so you can focus on the text. Okay, move this way. On click, go, 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 go. So, on click now. Come on, good. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. Okay, should go from here. It's this one should don't flip back so we can test it out. Okay. So then if you can focus on this texture, you can see the way it actually like reveals itself. So this time it's not coming from the bottom. The layer is actually the one that's expanding to reveal the text. So there's tons of things you can do as long as you have this basic of knowing how to use uh, what's it called uh, frames to 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 act as masks is basically a knowledge you can carry over. Even in what's it called after effects is kind of the same knowledge you just use masks to hide your text and then the mask reveals the text so basically it's just this is just masking technique so you can just play around with it and see what you can actually and you can create like a lot most of my like complex interactions is just basically me using frames to clip content and to hide stuff and then reveal them when i need to reveal them so you, there's tons of things you can do with this um, um, with this um, uh, uh, masking technique. You can also use actual mask because if I wanted to, because the issue with using frames as mask is that frames can only give you rectangles and circles. Frames can give actually give you. You can you can turn a frame to like give you like a complex shape. If, if I wanted to, use, wanted to like use a complex shape to hide this text in here, so I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't um, turn a um, a mask. A, sorry, a frame into a mask. But, for basic interactions that are just circles and uh, what's it called rectangles even my logo self my i think by what's it called let me see if i can find that logo again let me see if i can find the logo again even my logo sorry one second one second okay yeah let me see if i can play it yeah so even this logo is just this logo i made it's just basically the use of a uh, masks and uh, masks and layers sorry using layers to add to act as and what you put as a mask so it's really not rocket science at all at all at all you can there's tons of things you can actually do with this particular with this particular technique so that's basically all for this um, for this um, particular session if you have any questions you can just go ahead to ask but if uh, what's for the ground is open and there are none we can just go ahead and maybe wrap up till next week again so if you have question, any questions, this will be the time to ask your questions because we're done as it stands. And also, I'm going to be sharing this video on what's it called on the YouTube channel. So in case you don't really get it in this yeah, in this uh, what's it called in this session, you can go back and watch it. And if you have any questions, like I I always see, feel free to reach out to me. I will always respond to questions. I will always uh, what's it called try to help us uh, what's it called as best as I can with the uh, what's it called with any questions you may have. So if you've also done other things, once you are sharing, you can feel free to tag me and um, let me know how you were able to approach your own uh, um, version of it. But like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And if there are none, you can just go ahead to run the class. Right then um what's good i'll assume there are no questions and then we can just go ahead and call this um class um, what's support closed so thanks everyone again once again for uh, making it for this session i really appreciate and i appreciate your understanding for last time last week i was not really like what's good i was already um, in good condition but i'm better now much better now so i hope we can do this again uh, what's it called in next week and i will have i think before during the week i should have what's it called the agenda i should have the agenda for next session um planned out so i can share online and if you want to, if you're interested in learning you can just um, jump in on the call like this but if you're not you can always just chill and wait for the video to come out so that's basically all thanks once again for coming and then um, i'll see you some other time bye